it's me. I'm the same person that runs this channel. I just got a haircut. I gave myself a bit of a staycation, vacation, last couple of weeks. Twas nice. Cleared the mind. But it also got me thinking. That last video I did, um, showing you guys the first base I've ever made, gave me an itch. Not in my eye, but in my brain. I want to sell baits. Not just for more money, although that is a part of it, but for showing through video what goes into having a business out of your garage where you make things with your own hands and sell them. And no, I didn't run out of fishing lure ideas for my other videos. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know, there must be something in people where you wanna, you wanna feel like you have more purpose, you know, you wanna, you wanna face a market, sell things, provide value. I've been missing that recently. So, there's nothing stopping me from jumping right back in. I wanna make some baits, make some real good baits, and sell some really good baits, you know? So yeah, videos are gonna speed up. I'm gonna be running a business, so, I don't know, fast pace, more content to put out, more videos to put out. It's gonna be a bunch of testing of lures, trying to get a lineup that's really solid, trying to get baits that work really good. A lot of painting, a lot of, a lot of everything that goes into lure making. First thing I have to do is make sure a bait works good. I've already been working on a crankbait. My favorite kind of crankbait, it's a flat sided, square bill, kind of oversized conventional crankbait. I'm gonna see how this works. In the past, I've been pretty good about make, getting these to work really good right off the bat. It's a very forgiving design for a crankbait. The kind of action you're looking for these is a quick one, because it's a flat sided, so a fast shimmy, and uh, but very stable, because you want to be able to rip these, you want to be able to move these. It's a, it's a bait that you cover a lot of water with. So, let's see how this works. Sits nicely in the water. Yeah, uh, I don't think I would change anything. <laughs> I mean, that just, that was ripping it right there and it just ran perfectly straight, so. Yeah, this pond's shallow. It's got a lot of that going on. But yeah, for this size of a bait, that's, that's a beautifully tight action. And it's what you're looking for from a flat-sided crankbait, for sure. Yeah, and you can really crank on that. And it's perfectly stable, so that's a confidence booster. I think whatever design I end up going with with this bait, it's gonna, it's gonna be good. This is made out of pine, by the way. Very clean pine wood. That's the slow retrieve. I'll get a fast one here. Yeah, I'd say I hit the bullseye first try right there. I'm gonna go with that. It's uh, not usually that easy. But I've recorded everything that I need to do to get the bait to this point. Um, like how much weight needs to be in the belly, the exact template of the lip and the body shape and the chamfers and everything and where the eye goes. So I'm gonna make a batch of these. That's the template for this bait. And it's as simple as just making copies of that, adhering it to the wood, start cutting them out, start making some baits. I think actually I'm not gonna do batches. I think I'm still gonna make one bait at a time. 
I think I'll do that forever. That way I can focus on doing really good paint schemes on each one of these. So every bait can kind of have its own thing going, you know? Did you get one? Oh, you need me to get pliers? First fish of the year mm -hmm. for you. Bluegill. Yep. <laughs> Congratulations. Extremely tight fit, but that's what you want. You can see my finger right through it. It's gonna look classy. I think I'm gonna like this one at a time thing. Get to concentrate a lot on one bait, but still make a lot. Well, I guess not a lot. That's gonna amount to one bait comes out finished every day. I'll have a system of like three going at one time. I really like this pine. It seems to be just a little less buoyant than cedar, but it's a lot friendlier to work with. And you get the same effect really in the end. It's still very light, but I get the impression that it holds the screw eye tighter and uh, it accepts carvings a lot better. So where we're at with this lure, we got a one half inch hole that went 0.4 inches deep and that's for the lead. Uh, we drilled a 5 16th inch eye socket, two of them into this bait. And this is a, yeah, it was a 3 16th inch lip slot. We're using 3 16th inch thick Lexan stock polycarbonate for the lip. Next step, got to pour some molten lead into this crankbait. If this thing's clogged up a little bit, you gotta hit the stopper thing with a spoon to get it shut. That's why I do that sometimes. So 
So this is just a little bit of co I mean uh, uh, baking soda and I'm gonna put some super glue on that. That's hard as a rock, and that was real time. So just scuffed up the lip, mixed up five minute epoxy, applied it and stuck the lip in so that it's very straight. And now that ain't going nowhere. Hardware is all installed. Just need to seal this wood with some polyurethane and it'll be ready to paint. Or at least we can get started on the paint. Pretty much everything I hang up to drip dry now, I put a wire off of just to ensure that whatever excess wants to drip off, it can go down the wire and it has a place to go. Luckily, I've gotten to the point with the bait already, same bait, and the sealer is dry and we can put the base paint on this thing. I think I'm gonna start this one out with white and give it a good standard paint scheme that works around here because this one's gonna be mine. It's the first one I started. I need to decide what I want. It's never an easy decision. Got the white on it. It's so much easier when it's, uh, oh, I'm gonna paint this one a white bass. I'm gonna paint this a bluegill. I'm gonna paint this a pike or whatever. But when it comes to what do you want, I don't know. I don't think I want a bluegill. I'm resorting to process of elimination. I don't want a bluegill. The other main bait fish is a shad. I could, I could do a shad. I don't really want to do a shad though. Maybe a, more of a traditional fire tiger. I could do a fire tiger. Bright. I'm gonna do a fire tiger. Maybe a, maybe a variation or a spin off of that paint scheme. It's gonna be something like a fire tiger. I think the traditional fire tiger, it goes from uh, green on the back to orange on the belly with the black stripes. I think I want some yellow in there though. Bright yellow. Chartreuse. It's the fishing yellow. <laughs> there can be like a greenish chartreuse and then a more of a yellow chartreuse, I think. What I'm going with is just fluorescent yellow. I'll cover the whole thing in that. That's bright and kind of green it, if you look at it in person, which is fine, I don't care. But I'm gonna make it even more green towards the top and then it's gonna fade to the yellow that's already on and then it's gonna be orange on the belly. Probably a pearl orange. And a pearl lime green on the top. I got a pearl lime green. That'll look good. So it'll go from pearl on the top flank to not pearl to pearl orange on the belly. I think that's when you look at a bait, you can see the variation. You can see non-pearls against pearls, and I think that looks cool. I haven't used these paints in a long time. They've been laying dormant. Everything needs mixed well. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of yellow. It looks like there's a, a lot of yellow in this green. Should be able to fade it easily. Looks good. I chose against orange. I'm going straight for red. Pearl red on the bottom. I think I'm gonna make that red come up a little bit more. So that's the look I wanted. Lots of green, lots of yellow, lots of red. Now this is gonna get a clear coat and then once that clear coat's set tomorrow, I'm gonna finish painting this bait and that's gonna set the base coat apart from the clear coat. And that always looks good. 
when you do that. I could just finish painting the bait right now, but I'm gonna take the extra step and time to do that to the paint scheme, make it look good, give it depth. So I already put the clear coat on that bait. So we have the clear coat over the base coat of paint already. I need to get more of these made too. Get the system going, you know? I think I just snagged a turtle. Paying attention. Well, I can't. The screen goes black, and I can't see anything. I know what you mean. That's the five hundred. I think so. Let's go for 501. I really don't mess around with the clips. Anywhere I can clip it, I do. When I'm putting the screen on to paint the scales. We're gonna go from a silver to a white, silver on the top and then white to the bottom. The scales are gonna have that transition. I'm gonna do the white first and the silver is gonna go over the white because I want the silver to show up. Let's try to do this well. I can't tell if I did it. It's really hard to tell what you're painting when you have this window screen over your bait, you know? I mean, you can kind of tell, but it, it's always a reveal when you take it off and it's like, what did I do? Well, hopefully it's not like, what did I do? It's like, that looks good. In order to maintain as much brightness as I can in this bait, I'm gonna paint the fire tiger stripes that I just cut out over the window screen for the scales. So the black will just be inside of the scales and not over everything else. I waited for the paint to dry that I'm painting over right now, so it's ready to go. Not too shabby. All right, time to paint the gills. It's not a bad look, kind of a low gill. I don't mind that. So to keep this simple and bright, to finish this bait off, I'm gonna come back with the fluorescent yellow color. That's the middle of this bait and I'm gonna put that in the gills. And that's the last step. Kind of staying away from the very edges so it leaves a little bit of white. Maybe that's not the last step. I'm gonna put some blue towards the bottom of the gill. Went with pink instead of blue. I don't know, that gill needs one more thing. I'll think about it and show you. Now to finish off this bait, I'm gonna give it some red glass eyes. I think that's the traditional eye color for a fire tiger is red. Not that this is all traditional or anything, but I think red looks best. I went with not only the pink down at the bottom, I put some green towards the top, the same pearl lime green that's on the back. 
and then I put some red oxide on the top of the gill there to set it apart from the rest of the body. I think that's what it was needing, something that is different towards the top of the gill versus the back of the bait. Looks good now. Time to clear coat. We're gonna do some fishing with that bait in the next video. That bait's not a pushover either. That bait is an oversized flat-sided square bill crankbait. So if I can get something to bite it, it's probably gonna be decent. Looking forward to it. But that's it for this video. And don't worry, I'm not gonna go on vacation anytime soon again. I'll be back in a little bit. On to the next bait. I almost forgot this guy, the pregnant bluegill lure. Yes, I'm going to finish this bait, but it's not gonna be on video. I got the idea in my head to start a small scale lure company and I just couldn't get it out and it took priority. And when your interest sharply turned to something else, that is what you do. This is gonna get finished. It'll just be off, off camera because it's for Chelsea. I'm gonna finish it, but not on video. You'll see the finished product. It'll be cool. So yeah, on to the next bait.